Hey there, I'm Dr. Angie and this is my pug Pugsley and in this video I'm going to be answering pet parents questions. First we're going to start with Sue. Sue writes, my mule Shasta came down with moon blindness or uveitis. I've dosed her eye with vetropolicin several times as it keeps coming back. She can go for months and then it comes back. Do you have any info that can help with this or products? I'd be most grateful for any information you may have. Now, while I don't regularly practice equine medicine, my own horse does have chronic uveitis and it's really frustrating. And for those of you who don't know what chronic uveitis is, it's when the eye gets inflamed. I use steroids in my horse topically and that seems to really help him. And it also helps when I control his Cushing's disease. So you might wanna check your mule for that. Um, any other suggestions I would have is just to decrease inflammation as much as possible. Um, through diet and supplements. So let me know how it goes. Jules writes, my dear sweet kitty has something wrong again. I'm so sorry. She starts to lick her belly till it gets little red marks and show marks, I'm sorry, it's been a long day, and mows the hair away. Last time this happened, I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars at various vets and she was tested for mites, nothing showed. She was given revolution, put on expensive royal cane and food, nothing worked. She was losing hair and looked terrible. Finally, I put her on raw venison from Radcat, which seemed to clear the issue up. Okay, so probably your kitty has food allergies. That was about a year and a half ago. Then Radcat went out of business, which is so sad. There are so many cats and cat parents that are very sad about this. I now have her on the few remaining Radcat raw venisons we have for Marty's Meals transitional venison, which is supposed to be the same, but it's happening again. So there's something in the Marty's meals or any of the other foods that you're giving her that's causing this. So we have to figure out what that is. Raw belly licking the base of her spine. So this is what's happening for a kitty again and upper shoulders, some chin blackheads, um, which is indicative of dust mites I read, but it can be food allergies too. Um, it sounds like your kitty has food allergies. I'm distraught. It seems all the tests are non-conclusive and I just waste money going to vets. Yes, I can understand that. We don't have any good tests for food allergies. It's really trial and elimination and more trials and more eliminations and that's really frustrating. I wonder if we could put side by side the ingredients of Marty's Meals versus Radcat and see if we could do some investigative work there. Let me know how it goes. Nikki writes, I was wondering if you could address oral health. We do somewhat regular brushing and some fish skins and bones, but have been advised to get full cleaning with anesthesia, which scares me. Is that necessary? Any advice would be fabulous. Yes. So Nikki, sometimes it is necessary to put our dogs and cats under anesthesia so that we can take full mouth x-rays and really clean underneath the gum. If you're going to a practice that practices good anesthetic protocols, then it should be okay. Anesthesia is really safe in these conditions because we're not putting our uh, patients so deep down um, that it's dangerous. Um, so I would really encourage you to uh, ask about their anesthetic protocols and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Violet writes, I started my dog on CBD about a week and a half ago to help with seizures. He's on Keppra and Phenobarbital every 12 hours. I just watched your vlog and you said you take caution when they're on seizure meds. Can you please tell me what to watch out for? I live in the Northwest and vets here are not as knowledgeable on seizures and CBD. I love reading your emails. You educate me every day. Thank you, I appreciate that. I'm glad you read them. If I lived in your area, you would be my animal's vet. Oh, I would love to be your animal's vet. So I'm careful with CBD and drugs like phenobarbital only in that I keep monitoring phenobarbital levels. So if my patient were to get on a really high dose of CBD, I would probably check in on my phenobarbital blood levels more frequently. We don't know this for sure, but we think that CBD might increase cytochrome P450, which is metabolized, is the part of the liver that metabolizes um, drugs like phenobarbital. So in theory, no one's noticed this in actual practice, but in theory, it could be that your dog or cat would need less phenobarbital if your dog or cat was also on CBD. 
Now we need more tests to confirm this. I haven't noticed in practice that CBD actually changes the amount of seizure medications in the blood, but it's possible. So that's the part I'm careful about. Let me know how it goes. Katie writes, I have a question on taurine. How important is it that it be given in between meals? I think you could give taurine with meals, no problem. Karen writes, I found your office by searching for holistic vets or CBD oil. I wanted to see if I could pay for a phone consult to discuss um, my kitty. It's hard for me to do phone consults, especially in states that I don't have licenses in. Um, I live in California and Lucy is 15 years old, was recently diagnosed with lymphoma in her GI tract in her stomach and her liver lining is thick. I'm so sorry to hear this. She currently had, has um, chronic kidney disease and thyroid disease, which is treated. Chemo was not recommended for her, so they started her on prednisone. She's still eating okay and getting around, but can definitely tell she's leaning out and she's already a petite kitty. She last weighed six pounds. I'm hoping to find an option for her with CBD oils that will make her more comfortable. And I don't want to play with her health on trying to figure out. Sorry, there's, there's a squirrel. Um, I don't want to play with her health on trying to figure out the CB stuff on my, CBD stuff on my own. So Karen, no problem. I think that um, CBD can be great for cats with lymphoma. Not only does it help stimulate their appetite, but I think it makes them feel better as well. And there's some new evidence that supports that it might help fight cancer. Now, I've never seen it um, stop or reverse cancer, especially lymphoma, intestinal lymphoma. But I think it would be worth a try, especially for the appetite stimulation. I would start with a half of a milligram per kilogram um, twice a day and work up from there. If you have questions that you would like me to answer, you can email me at angie at boulderholisticvet.com and I will see you next time.